Hello everybody and uh, welcome to a quick tutorial on how to put your voice uh, on a recording in Logic Pro version 9 for Mac. So first thing you need to do here is go down and start up Logic Pro. So now that we have Logic Pro start up, we're going to have a new project. You can see the template here. We're going to go to Empty Project, create an empty project with no settings or any instruments or anything else. You can also create, uh, at this point, custom templates, but I'll show you that in a later tutorial. So, <clears throat> first we're going to create an empty project. First thing it does is it's going to ask you how many new tracks you want. Since we're only going to put one vocal on there and we're going to have an audio track we just need one vocal audio track. Software instrument is uh, for things like drums or keyboards or any MIDI instruments that are played by Logic itself. You can also hook up an external MIDI instrument that Logic can run but uh, I don't usually own these things so I probably won't cover that. Um, you have your mix of inputs from your recording device. I have input one and input two. You could have any number of inputs. Um, since I know this is going to be a vocal track, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on input two already. And I'm also going to um, check input monitoring, which means that it's going to come on immediately and you'll always hear what's coming in on input two when you have this checked and record enable. You don't have to do either one of these, I'm just doing them right now. And we create the track. Now it's going to ask you where to save it. I have a place I'm going to save it. And I'm going to do it under covered songs and the song I know is going to be called Show Me How to Live by Audio Slave. Okay, now it's done, it's created the audio track. What I like to do is I like to rename the audio track Vocals 1 or Vox 1. You can turn off the input if it's really annoying you or the record enable. Um, that, that was just from checking it. It gives you the option to have them on right when you start the track. Now the other thing is, is you're going to want to import the audio. You can't just uh, just sit here with uh, you know nothing playing. The other thing is, is if you know the tempo of the song, uh, you'll want to go down here. Since I know the tempo of the song is going to be 90 beats per minute, I'm going to change that right off so we can line up our measures across the top here for the song. Since I've already downloaded the audio file that I'm going to be using, I am going to head over to the audio and we're going to go to Downloads or wherever you've got your audio file and we're going to do this. It's Show Me How to Live by Fioretti a person on uh, iTunes, uh, iComps. So we're importing this track and let's see what it does with it. After it imports here what we're going to do is we're going to correct our little mistake um, we're going to go new track with duplicate setting. What that does in the track menu is you've created a new track with a duplicate setting and we're not going to have it on the vocal track like I'd imported it. It's going to now be on this track and that's going to be called uh, band. Another nice thing I like to do is, um, and it's not necessary, you can color your track. Any old color by going over to the color tab here clicking it on and so if you have you know 200 tracks you're working with you may want to color each section for the type of instrument it's in or whatever so you can do that here by coloring that okay now uh, we've set up the song we can check our levels here in the recording device let's see if that's right. We're going to now choose the effect 
in the settings um, that we want for the voice. What I usually go for is right off the bat is the male rapper vocals. The only reason I do that is because it's a strong vocal that um, compresses, uses this compressor here to uh, really push the vo vocal up in front. So when I'm recording and doing stuff, I like to hear that. Also in the EQ, it's got this little thing. As you can see my voice, hello, it accentuates the higher parts here in the mix. And it and, you know, it's, it does a, a very good job of uh, recording the vocals. Um, I won't be rapping on the song, but uh, you know, the setting is really good. Uh, if you're wanting really nice upfront non ambient music. So let's see if you don't want to see these tracks here. You, you've also got choices here if you want to try other settings uh, for your stuff for whatever effects. Now that's the analyzer that just shows you what kind of waveforms that are coming in so you can adjust the peaks if you want more bass if you want more mid-range or you want more highs, you can increase or decrease these to your taste. Um, what I like to do is I like to record the voice kind of flat without having to uh, <clears throat> do any of that. So I'm going to switch that off and the compressor is nice. Uh, it's the default rap vox compressor. Don't know too much about compressors, but um, I know that uh, the limiter set at zero. Um, you can turn that on so it won't blow you out. Um, auto gain set to zero. There's peaks um, that are set at negative 20. So anything <clears throat> above negative 20 is going to get pushed. I think that's what that means. Anyway. Okay, now we're, we're going to go to the section where we uh, r record some vocals for this. Now that we are done setting up the basic track, we're going to want to save it. It saves, and then we're going to get ready to press the record button here. And uh, oh, before we before we do that, what what you want to do is uh, you want to go to the recording section in your settings for your project, and you're going to want to. What I like to do is I like to have two bars of count in before it gets to uh, the actual audio here. Some people can go one bar. I like two bars because that gives me enough time after I hit the record button to get adjusted and get ready to sing. And uh, I won't record the pre-roll. So anything after the roll, was, I'll explain that later. And then the metronome, uh, you'll want to adjust this. I only like to hear it only during the count-in. So you'll want to click this only during the count and that gives you a nice one two three four at the tempo you've chosen um, and then when it starts recording it goes off so if you have headphones that aren't very um, that don't uh, that bleed a lot then clicking this only during count in then you won't hear the clicks while you're singing if it picks up that sort of those high frequency clicks so it leads to a cleaner recording, plus you don't really want to do it when you got drums and other things going on right here in this, this particular track. Alright, so we're done with that. We'll click this off. Thank you for listening to this portion. We've set up the basic song. We've saved some things. What we've done is uh, imported some audio by using the file, import audio file. We've gone to the directory, imported that audio. We've set up the vocal track. We've chosen from our list, uh, the channel strip setting of male uh, rap vocals. And for the band, we haven't said anything at all because we're not going to use, use that. And we won't decide that until the end of the uh, mixing stage anyway. Usually, if you have multiple tracks, you'll want to you wanna do something like compress some things or EQ some things just to get it better, you know, and mix some things. But this track here is all all together already so you all those problems are are uh, uh, can't be fixed all right thank you for listening and uh, see you next tutorial and on show me how to live recording some Chris Cornell vocals